The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast. Join us around the pit as we talk all things barbecue. Now here is your host, Johnny Mag. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. Another episode of the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast. I'm Johnny Mags. Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate each and every one of you. Chrissy, we're going to have a good time today. We are. I mean, Uh, I appreciate most of them. I'm excited. This is going to be epic. Yes. Epic, epic, yes. epic. And oh, do I have a funny story to tell too. But first and foremost, I want to wish the boys good luck this weekend mm-hmm. at the competition, the New England Pitmasters. Greg, Kevin, Chris, and C Mac going to be hitting it hard up in the great state of Maine. And uh, the Coras, Coras, ah, uh, shit. But, uh, the Coors competition. I forget the full name of it. I'm sure people know. Great little chair. It, awesome. But the boys have been doing test runs. Greg threw a picture of the ribs the other day. They look tremendous. Kevin's coming off his 10th place call in chicken. So the boys are going to be hitting it hard up in Maine. Uh-huh. But let's get to today. Day. Yes. Today's show brought to you by Uncle Steve Shake. You ever wondered why there's a line and you're trying to get into your neighbor's backyard when they're having a barbecue, but ain't nobody even stopping and looking at your house? Do you know why, Chrissy? I do, because they're using Uncle Steve Shake and you're not. <laughs> That's right. Uncle Steve uses some of the most freshest ingredients in all his 12 wonderful flavors, including his competition line and his dessert shake. God, I love it. And also the new to the market, small batch only still, but the sauce with no name. Yeah, absolutely tremendous. Have we gotten a care package of that yet? I'll get you a bottle. Yeah. I know a guy. You know a guy? I know yes. a guy. <clears throat> Uncle, S- Uncle Steve has great customer service, so any question you have, He's going to be the one answering the phone, helping you out on anything, getting you the right flavor profile for you. Check out his Facebook page, Uncle Steve Shake Nation, for some extra giveaways and some guarantee some coupon codes. But check that out, UncleSteveShake.com. Shake some on everything. everything. Also brought to you by Two Guys Smoke Shop and TwoGuysCigars.com. Whether I'm barbecuing or not, I always keep the smoke rolling thanks to twoguyscigars.com. <laughs> oh, this must be my birthday or something. Today, I am smoking mm-hmm. the La Flor Dominicana Andalusian Bull. You can't mm-hmm. even, you still can't even get these. Mm-mm. They came out five, six years ago. I know a guy. You know a guy. <laughs> Thanks to twoguyscigars.com, I get to smoke some of the best cigars in the world, and so can you. Just visit twoguyscigars.com for your perfect barbecue companion. That's number two, guyscigars.com. Dot com. Also brought to you by Backline Smokers and Backline Fabrication. Ryan Newland is building some of the craziest one of pits coming out of Austin, Texas today, including mine. Only 38 days before I get my hands on that bad boy. Ooh, exciting. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> Ryan, like I said, builds some of the craziest stuff, has c- from the ground up. You want a little backyard cooker? He's got that. You want the competition size? He's got that. 250, 750, 1,000 gallon trailer smokers, and his Frankenstein, also known as the multi tool, charcoal grill, plancha, Santa Maria, all in one. Check him out at Backline Fab and Backline Smokers. Ryan builds what you want, not what you need. Also brought to you by Magna Chef Gloves, our brother Al Infante knows a little something about fire management. He's a Miami-Dade firefighter, and he has designed these gloves from the ground up, and they are incredible. These are the Magna Chef Gloves. 
100% food grade silicone patented magnetic clips. Easy on and off. So you will not lose it. Heat rated up to 500 degrees. Web fit for firm grip. One size fits all. Dishwasher safe. And do not forget about the new Freedom Gloves. If the five finger way is a little bit more your style. The extra long gauntlet sleeve, protect them forearms, yeah. still with the patented magnetic clips. And these, my friends, heat rated up to 932 degrees, despite what C-Mac's about to say right now of 7,000. <laughs> we do not go with that, but these will handle it. Check them out at magnuschef.com. That's M-A-G-N-E-C-H-E-F dot com. Magnuschef, master the fire in freedom gloves. Take a stand, free your hands. Also brought to you by custom cutting boards, rs.com. Ian Hemming is building what I consider the Yeti of cutting boards out of Magnolia, Texas. These cutting boards take an absolute beating from the dishwasher board, which is your standard countertop board, to the massive 36 by 18 brisket board and the pizza board for that perfect slice every time. High-grade protection, non-slip grip, even on a wet surface, these boards will not slide on you. Mm -hmm. Multicolors available, that deep, beautiful, deep reservoir to catch all that juicy goodness from whatever proteins you're cooking. Check them out at customcuttingboardsrs.com. That is the letter R, us, dot, com. So let me bring my guest on, and then I'll tell, quickly yeah. tell my little story, because I've been giggling like a schoolgirl over this one all day. <laughs> this was hilarious. Guys, if you follow Instagram, you follow TikTok, and anything in the cooking and barbecue world, you have seen my next, my guest joining me today. His give a shit level is an absolute zero, which makes him an absolute rock star in my book. Heck yeah. He has the fun with it, has the passion for it, and man, is he cooking some grub. From competitions to backyard game day wings with pops. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> coming from Arizona by way of Waddell, Arizona, from your behind barbecue, Kyle Matashevsky. What's up, brother? Uh, what's, up? what's up, amigo? Chilling, brother. <laughs> Chilling. I, I, I appreciate that intro, man. That was good. I like it. Hey, you, you got me. You got me all pumped up over here. I'm ready to go. Hey, man. Turn up soup cartel, That's baby. Right, baby. You That's know, right. You know. Welcome to the cartel. I like that shirt. <laughs> it looked good on you. Damn straight. That's Damn right. Damn straight. But real quick, Kyle. Yes, so my wife calls me today, and she is giggling. She goes, you need to hear this. I'm like, all right. I go, what's up? She goes, the kids are playing outside. Okay, no kidding. You don't say. I guess they're chalking. They're filling the driveway up, and here comes a guy walking the neighborhood with his dog, right? Yeah. So he stops and says hello to the kids. How are you having a good day? You know, having fun? Now, my neighborhood, there's nothing to worry about there because if you're walking around in your car, you, you're supposed to be there. I'm in the sticks. I'm gotcha. so secluded, dirt roads, the whole nine. Yep, that's so, just like me. Yeah, so no worries about anybody sitting there talking and great people. So they're like, oh, yeah, we're having a great time. And then apparently the guy had his phone on speakerphone, and they're looking around because they hear my voice. <laughs> the guy's listening to the podcast. I'm doing the Magna <laughs> Chef Gloves ad, hey. and he's standing at the end of the driveway, and here I am. So if you're the dude walking your dog in Santa Bonstead, bro, stop and say hello, brother, because that's me. You were talking to the kids today. So he's going he's gonna to start giggling when he listens to this episode. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'd shout That's the name, awesome. but I don't know, brother. Don't yes, know. But let's see real quick here. We got Kent. Thank you. Brother Alton, the dog father. No way. Uncle Steve. <coughs> oh, there's the dog father. Gray, what's up? Max calling you out, bro. Fred, what's happening? Kyle, what's going on? Chris Rosinski, brother. Dave Grover, all the way from Utah, checking in. Dave's e- my man. Dave, good dude, good dude. Yes, sir, good dude. Efren, what's happening? There's Mrs. Mags, waving to everybody. Darren Lucas, what's going on? Chapin, Fred. Lep, what's going on? There's my man Greg, the barbecue broker right there, getting ready for the big comp this weekend. And let's see, let's see. Ryan Newland, there he is, my man. Why are you watching this? You should be building my pit, son. <laughs> you only got 38 days before the party. C-Mac in the house. And I see oh, Brother Randy, from Big Salinas Barbecue in the house. Shaga is in the house. All right, brother. Brass tax time. So t- tell us, who is Kyle? Where you from? How would you, you start your barbecue journey, and how did it lead to your behind barbecue? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so growing up, um, I was big time into sports. My parents were always putting me into sports. So uh, I had a real big, like, competitive edge in me. And uh, I, uh, in high school, I was on varsity. You know, I played all four years. And then the last game of my senior year, I tore my ACL. So all my scholarships, everything that I had planned, I thought I was going to the Dallas Cowboys, baby. Like, I, <laughs> I was ready. Um, no, all that got put away, man. And uh, so my dad, my dad was always, as I refer to him as Pops, he was always the cook at the house. He cooked all the time. That's all. He loved cooking. So as I got my knee surgery a couple years later, um, I had a two-story house, and I couldn't get up and down the stairs and um, so my dad, he was working in Mexico at the time and he, he came into town and, uh, he, uh, was helping me around the house. You know, I'm on crutches. I got a busted up knee and whatever. And I found barbecue pit masters on TV. So we started watching that man. And I was watching how much fun this would be. And, you know, cause I was always like a tailgate, uh, tailgate guy too. So I was, you know, it looked like a tailgate party. Plus you get to cook some food, you get to turn it in, you know, stuff like that. So my dad and I watched probably every episode and then a couple, I think, I believe it was a couple weeks later was his birthday. So I bought him a, I bought him a rinky dink POS from smoker from home Depot. And, uh, we cooked on that all the time, man. Every chance we got, we cooked on that. So then, um, I started looking at competition barbecue and I found a place, um, an organization out here in Arizona called Arizona barbecue uh, AZ barbecue. So they were hosting contests and stuff like that. And there was a contest out in Scottsdale, Arizona. And so, uh, we had this, we had this busted ass motor home look like breaking bad. We <laughs> filled, we filled that up. We had the rinky dink smoker in there. And then I had, I bought, uh, two, uh, WSMs and, uh, we went to the contest, you know, there's all these big wigs there. And, there was a team there that was our neighbors. It was uh, Team Eno Serve. I'll never forget them. And uh, they were number one in KCBS, and they had this badass trailer. They had, I mean, top of the line, looking good. I mean, just everything was just spotless, perfect. Um, so I got to talking with them, and they kind of, you know, guided me, you know, about building boxes. And, like, this is my first time. Like, I'm here to drink. Let's have some fun. So um, we did the contest. We got seventh place chicken out of like 127 teams, 17 or 127 teams, something like that. And uh, we were hooked, man. Everything else we turned in garbage. Everything was garbage. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? Hey, we got to walk the stage in front of that crowd. And it was we were hook, line and sinker. So ever since then, man, my dad and I, uh, we've been competing every year for the past, I don't know, nine, ten years now about three, four times a month. And then I, you know, COVID hit and then we got into this SCA stuff. So I started chasing points and that, and then, yeah, man. So, you know, here I am. And, uh, as I was chasing points in the state cook-off association, 
um, they have a side category called ancillaries. So you got the steaks and then they got the ancillary. So the promoter will pick like, hey, we're going to do burgers at this contest. We're going to do wings. We're going to do desserts, bur- you know, whatever it is. So I that year I hit 54 contests in a year. So I had two weekends that I did that I got to actually be at home. Other than that, I was traveling, man. I was I was chasing those points. So I ended up second place in the nation in the ancillary uh, points chase. Um, and then, yeah, man, I was using this. I was to help me really stick out. I always thought that, you know, you need to be different. You know, yeah. if you're going to do wings, everybody's doing the same old damn wings, man. Everybody's being the same. Let's not be the same. Let's be different. You know? So what did I do? I wrapped my wings in bacon and just different, different flavoring and different stuff like that. Um, we're real big. We like eating Mexican food. We're really big in Mexican food, green chilies and stuff like that. And, uh, my dad and I came up with this recipe. And so I started using it, man, in these, in these contests when I was chasing points. And I think just this flavor stuck out between what everybody else was doing that people were like, you know, this was, it was so damn good that, you know, they hit me with first place, you know, and I would, and I would, I would, I would absolutely kill it with using that rub. So by the time I got done, man, I, after the long drives with Smitty, the different contests from Luton Booty and Phil. And, you know, I was kind of picking their brain about, you know, you know, I don't want to be just some guy that comes out, you know, another guy that comes out with a rub or something like that. You know, I want to be different. So, um, yeah, so I came out with that, man. And here we go. That's it. And with the rub we're talking about <clears throat> is the green chili bacon rub. Yes, sir. And <laughs> Chrissy's still over there. Go ahead. Is this, this a little, is this my tongue still tingling a little? Yes. Or a lot? It's delicious. Yeah. It's just got, it's got See, a little pep to it. <laughs> yeah, it does. But the thing is, you know, with a lot of rubs, when you try rubs, you got to cook with it because yeah. it's a completely different oh, flavor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So once you cook with that, um, a lot of the heat goes away, but it's still there. It's still got a little, little kick at the end. But uh, it's worth yeah. it for the flavor. I mean, I like that's. That's the way uh, we came out with that. And it was, and my partner, Kofini, he's the one in Justin Kofini, him and I both came out with that and we got two more coming out. Oh, nice. Yes, sir. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> like I said, the, the taste of this, mm. it is so new, so unique. Yeah. Is putting it lightly. I would agree. At this point, yeah. doing your podcast, it I've tasted a bunch. It is completely different than anything. Yeah. We've all tasted it. God knows. That's all we do is yeah. taste it, it. Taste this new season I'm working on. Taste this. Taste this. this. You know, it, they're all great. But this is so unique. Why am I having a hard time with unique? I don't know. <laughs> See, it. that was the thing. When we came out with that, we didn't want to be your average, you know, no offense to anybody else. But, you know, everyone's got a chicken rub, a beef rub, steak rub, this rub, that rub. We wanted to hit the spots that. Nobody would have even thought of like you're walking down the aisle of a million rubs and you see a, a green bottle that says green chili bacon rub. I mean, that'll that'll stop you mm-hmm. to grab 100%. that, you know, throw it in the cart. Let's try that. Oh, for so, sure. You know, that was another thing. For sure. Eric Ramey, what's up? Harold Williamson, good to go. Barbecue. What's going on? Oh, good friend. Bill Purvis from Chicken Fried Barbecues in the house. What up, Billy? <laughs> Kevin, what's up, brother? Good luck this weekend. Give him hell on the chicken, son. Yeah, Bill's a great guy. Bill's a great dude. Great dude. Great dude. So, yeah, okay, so that's how it all went. The rub came about. Now, how the hell did you get mixed up with Smitty (laughs) and Phil? (laughs) Man, Um, (laughs) let's see. Probably my third, second or third contest is when I met Phil and Smitty. So I was set up between Phil and Smitty and they've already known each other for a while. And there was a lot of trash talking, man. And it's just my dad and I, and I'm thinking these dudes are crazy. Yeah. Man. Cause they, like, they did the crazy. episode of smoke together. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So we were set up next to them and you know, I get, you know, when I get to drinking, man, it's you better watch out. Like, <laughs> so I got to drinking. I went over there, started talking to Smitty and you know, Hey, he's a big drinker. We we instantly clicked, man. And you know, and the thing about Smitty, man, he I owe him everything because he literally took me under his wing and showed me the ropes. You know, he would try all my barbecue. He would tell me if it sucks. Hey, add some salt. Add this. Do that. 
you know, try doing this next time, blah, blah, blah. And we just clicked, man. It was, I, I owe him everything, man. He took me under my wing and pretty much showed me, showed me the ropes on everything. So, um, yeah, but with Phil, <laughs> Phil's a different story, man. He's, he's a great dude. And, uh, I met him at the same contest. He actually was dropping. He, he was pulling ribs out of his smoker and they dropped and fell on the floor. And I was the only one that saw that. He kind of looked at me and we kind of looked at him and, you know, then we connected we were talking and hanging out and stuff. But yeah, that's my, that's my ride or die, man. Yeah. And we're but speaking I, of Phil the Grill. Yes, sir. AKA the Jay-Z of barbecue. Jay-Z of barbecue. So in case anybody like didn't to, understand. I like to call him the LL Cool J of barbecue. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you have to ask him about that. Oh, I will. I'm making a note because a, a certain somebody is coming on next week. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, Cool J of Barbecue. That is awesome. That is great. So, like you, like you said, um, you did a lot of cooking with your father. Yes, now, is sir. that is is he? Gave you obviously has given you a lot of inspiration, yeah. You know, and been a real mentor during yep. the whole thing, especially after watching the Pitmasters and you connected on that. And he used his experience over the years, and you, your, your, are you fine tuning his tutelage? Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of these ancillaries that I do, the side categories, you know, barbecue, him and I both started like learning together about this style of cooking. My dad, he's worked in two, two or three different restaurants growing up when he was going to school and stuff. And, uh, since, you know, he's always cooked, he's got, you know, tons of years of experience on me and, um, whatever the category is, um, I'd go over to his house or he'd come over to my house, maybe three, four times a week. And we would go through a practice and, you know, and he's taught me a lot of things, man. Like he's taught, I owe him everything. He's taught me a lot. Nice. Nice. All right. So, well, it, the word ancillary keeps coming up. So that's just a natural segue into the story of a certain ancillary category of <laughs> appetizer. And you being an out-of-the-box thinker really shoved it right up the hoop of everybody. <laughs> and... <laughs> To the point of we had a certain big wig company was getting a little upset with you, yep. but which gave birth to the turnip soup cartel. Yes, sir. It's the How cartel, about baby. that? <laughs> it's like Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an if I'm not mistaken, it was an ancillary category for yep. appetizers. Mm -hmm. So. Why soup? How, first, first and foremost, how? This is the real question I have. How do you put soup in a turn-in box? Well, so those little, <laughs> uh, you know, the, like like a contest, people use those little shot glasses, those little. Uh, yeah, the little plastic little, ramekins. Little six ounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like little six ounce little plastic cups. Well, that's what I turned the soup in. Okay. The How it started was. Um, Smitty was there and we did, it was a, I think this was a dessert contest. So I'm going to drop my own talk dessert steak and an appetizer. So I turned some stuff in and I was chasing points, man. Like I was, I didn't care about the steak. I only cared about the ancillary. So steak was behind me. I would throw it on whenever I, you know, I don't have like a timeline or anything for it. I was there for the ancillaries. So as I go and turn all my stuff in and, you know, we've all been drinking and we're getting ready to go to awards and they're going through the top 10 in ancillaries. And Smitty looks over at me. He's like, Hey man, he's like, don't be going up there and telling these people what you're doing. Do not tell if it's working, do not tell them what you're doing. So I was like, shit. Okay. I got you. So I took first place in both categories and I told turn up suit. I made turn up suit. So next contest, it was a, it was a, uh, appetizer contest and my dad is a giant giant soup fan like this dude could eat soup every damn day breakfast lunch and dinner okay so and i was telling him i was like yo let's try to make this turnip soup like let's try to make it so we made we made some turnip soup put in those little ramekins turned it in it was a cold day in california turned it in 
boom, first place. Go up there, turn up soup. Everyone's thinking this. What is, this guy's turning in soup and beating us. Guys doing jalapeno poppers, wings. They got lamb chops. They got all this crazy stuff. And some fu- here and does soup. <laughs> so as I'm going on my drive home, I get this Instagram message from a person in Vegas. And this person goes off on me, like totally goes off. Like you're telling me you're turning in soup for a dessert contest or not a dessert contest for an appetizer contest. And you're taking first place. She, and she goes off. You're a cheater. You're this. That's not an appetizer. And she's going off on me. And I'm, and from that moment on, on that drive home, I was like, you know what? It'll be forever turn up soup because if you're going to come up to me like a dick, yeah, I made turn up soup. You are not going to know what I made. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Unless somebody came up to me and was like, hey, look, I'm struggling in this category. I've done this, this and this. You know, if you're going to be nice about it, I'll tell you everything I do, because guess what? You still got to cook it. Yeah, you still got to cook it. So we get down to uh, the world championship in Texas and it's the world stake championship. And they took all the ancillary top 10 guys, everybody that was in the top 10 and ancillaries that were chasing points. We're going to take you out there and uh, you guys are going to compete head to head. See who's see who's you know, who's the best. Um, So they said, you're not going to find out what you're going to make until you get there. So within like two or three days of us leaving, we get it. We all get an email says, hey, we're going to provide you with beef bacon and you got to make a dish with beef bacon. And I'm thinking, I'm in Arizona, man. We ain't got beef bacon out here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I was all over the place trying to find some beef bacon. I got to what I'm going to do. So I made turn up soup. Okay. We turned it into championship. They call me for second place. <laughs> so I walk up on the stage and I yell, you know, my, what's your name? Where are you from? What'd you make? You know, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, I'm Kyle. You're behind barbecue. And I made turn up soup and I did the mic drop. And people are, and you know, it's not like they're clapping. Everyone's like, it's like that silent, like, what? What, what the hell did they make? <laughs> so I also, I also placed ninth place in my category for the steak. So I qualified to cook for the world championship in steak. And then I took second ancillaries. So as I'm at my trailer, I'm getting ready to cook this steak for $10,000. So I'm yeah. zoned in. Music's up. Fill the grills there. A couple of them. And we're zoned in, bro. So this dude comes up to me and I can tell he's been drinking a little bit. He comes up to me. He's like, Hey, and I got this shirt on. It says Kyle up in the corner. He's like, Hey, are you Kyle? I, <laughs> he's like, did you really do turn up soup yesterday? I was like, yeah. And a couple of my buddies start kind of giggling and stuff. And he's like, man, he's shaking his head. He's like, I am so offended. You turn in a turn up. And I was like, what? Why? He's like, I am the executive chef of Campbell's Soup Company, and I would have never guessed, thought of to make turnip soup. And I, we can chat when I'm done. I got two minutes before I got to put my steak on. I'm cooking for ten thousand dollars. Just come back in a little bit. Yeah. Mumbled something under his breath. <laughs> cooking my steak, Phil. Everybody's laughing. Okay, so turning my steak. Hour goes by. I'm loading up the trailer. I'm inside the trailer. And my dad, my dad's outside with Phil the Grill and everybody. And this dude comes back and he sticks his head in the trailer and he's jabbering, talk, saying something. I have no idea what he's saying. I'm trying to walk out of the trailer and he kind of looks at my dad. And he said something to my dad. And then Phil the Grill came over and looked at this dude. He's like, now, excuse my language. You better get out of this camp and leave right now. And he's throwing his hands up, walking off, blah, blah, blah. So the asshole that I am, I got a Campbell soup can <laughs> and I put turnip soup on it. And it says you're behind barbecue on the top where it's supposed to say Campbell's. And I rocked that for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So, so the, the chef at Campbell's soup didn't even think about turning in soup. Yeah. Yeah. And then wow. it turned into this thing, man. It just turned, it just snowballed into this whole cartel. Cause you know, it's, uh, I'm close, you know, I'm close with the guys we cook against and we, you know, we all want to do good. We all want to beat each other, but you know, if we cheer on everybody. Oh, hell yeah. And 
And so, like, people started catching on. You know, a few of my buddies, they go up there, ah, you know, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm from Arizona, and I made turnip soup. Or they would go up there and say, yo, turnip soup cartel, baby. Because you know what? We're not going to tell you guys what we cooked, man. We worked our ass off, and I probably I cooked three, four times a day or a week leading up to this contest on what I'm going to cook. So I'm not going to go up on stage and tell you what I made. Because if you beat me, a lot of the people go up there and say what they made, say mm-hmm. what they did. And if you beat me, I'm the guy in the crowd and I got my notes open on my phone and I am typing everything you did that you said you did. And I'm going to make that 10 times better and come back and beat you with that. Yep. So exactly. That's that's kind of my it's exactly like, not, not to sound cocky or anything, but that's just, oh. you know, you work you worked hard on a recipe. Why am I going to give it to you? Like, you know what I mean? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And, you know, like you like you said, when you when you first started, when you recover from the knee. You know, you're watching Pitmasters. And, you know, yeah. a, lot of us, a lot of us guys now, we have that same story. That we turn on fl- flicking through the, ch- the channels one day, and we run yeah. across barbecue Pitmasters, start watching it, and, with, you know, next thing you know, you're like three or four episodes in, and it's like, you know, I could probably do that. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, and I, I remember, because <clears throat> I'm a lot visual. Yeah. So I'll, and I, and I, was, I was joking with Bill Purvis, the other uh, when he was on the other week, and I really wasn't joking, but <laughs> you know, with this whole barbecue USA thing, yeah. I'll go and watch the season and enjoy the season. Yep. Then I'll go back and watch and pause and, it, and I'll yeah, I'll look past you, yep. and see what see what's in the background. Exactly. You know, oh, that's exactly. a that's a that's a blues hog. Ch- uh, you know, ch- Chipotle yep. barbecue sauce, or oh, there's this Cosmos Dirty Bird. Oh, there's yep. his brisket injection. There's this, there's that. You know, yep. I'm taking the little bits and this. You know, and and how I'm, I'm I literally wrote all that shit down. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I'm mixing. You know, I just one one particular it was, it might have been the very early Pitmasters when they were actually following the five teams around. Mm-hmm. So they were following Big Mo, Myron, Tuffy, Michael Character. Yep. Um, and this was when Mo was still cooking on the eggs. Okay, so this was this was the yeah, beginning. Was <clears throat> and right in his trailer, he had the two bottles of different blues hog. So it's like, yo, okay, got them mixing because he, he, he it showed you he's mixing these jars. Yeah. You know, and his hands were covering the labels, but when yeah. he put them down, you could you could just tell. From the design of the side of with the Blue Hog logo, yeah. it's like okay. So now I'm mixing those. Okay, there you go. There you go. You know. Yep. And if anybody wants a killer comp, killer <laughs> combo, take the original and the uh, uh, the Tennessee red. See red. Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a com- That's a combo right there. Yes, sir. All right. So we're coming into football season. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Who you? I, obviously, I know you're a boys fan. America's team, baby. That's the only team. That's it. No, no college. I like ASU, man. But you know, I don't really pay too much attention. But I'm Arizona State fan. But no, I'm Cowboys forever. All right, all right. So week one. <laughs> yep. Okay. We got the Dallas Cowboys versus my New England Patriots. Oh, all right. You, throw a little, you want to throw a bet down? I'm, I'm in. I'm, I just happen to be in Arizona. Oh, And shit. you catch win and you drop a brother a line going, yo, let's go. Okay. All right. So I come over to the Casa, me, you, Pops, and whoever else. Yes, sir. What are we throwing down on game day, brother? Bacon wrap wing. Oh, chicken wing fanatic, man. So bacon wrapped wings with some green chili bacon rub on it. That's all you need. Perfect. That's all you need. Nice. <laughs> nice. 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 That's all you need. So we're watching the game, and, you know, it, 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 unfortunately, it ends in a tie. So there is no winner, no loser. We're the winners in the group because of the camaraderie, the friendship, the wings, a yep. few adult beverages. Yes, sir. A lot of those. So we decide to sit down and do a podcast. <laughs> Tell me about Don't Drop the Tongs. Oh, man. <laughs> well, 
offense to anybody else. There's a lot of podcasts out there. You know, they're all they're all kind of the same. I mean, we all interview people and that and Phil and I, you know, we've been cooking a lot of steak steak contests together. And uh there's always been people that would always come up to us and be like, Man, like I would love to be a fly on the wall on your guys' conversations. And then we'd always tell them, like, no, you probably don't want to be because we talk a lot of shit, you know. We joke around. We're we're bashing each other constantly. And, you know, we just we just talk. So, you know, that kind of gave us the I got a buddy that works at the uh, radio station here in Phoenix. And I've been friends with him for, oh, man, 16, 17 years, probably. And uh, he's been wanting to try to do podcasts and stuff. And I kind of brought up the idea. I said, yo, I mean, we got. We got two guys that do competitions. One owns a restaurant. One travels all the time and does contests. And then you got a guy that's he barbecues. He's a backyard barbecuer. Really familiar with the whole, you know, competition scene and what happens and what goes on. So like he could kind of be the mediator and kind of break us down. Like, okay, so what do you mean there? Like, what do you mean by this or that? Um, yeah. So we kind of want to just. We wanted to do a podcast and just us two talking shit and hanging out and telling, you know, it's kind of like you go to a barbecue contest, you get there. We usually go on Thursdays. Um, there's a bunch of us that kind of go. and We kind of uh, we call it a happy hour. So we're sitting around the fire. We're all talking shit to each other, telling all the stories that like, you know, that's out there that really like the general public don't really know or it's not really broadcasted on Facebook. You know, it's kind of one of those stays out stays on a thursday whatever happens on a thursday stays on a thursday so i want to say yo let's bring that to light because there's a uh, there's stories and stuff that you know we could kind of bring out of course we're going to piss some people off but you know what (laughs) if they know who we are then they know us being up yeah so yeah so we came out with this podcast man it's called don't drop the tongs um every wednesday we come out with it um this one's going to be actually pretty good um, we, we got a couple Thursday night stories in here that are going to change that literally changed somebody's life. <laughs> like that, I mean, in a mean way, but this dude's life has changed because of a Thursday night. So okay. you have to tune in. It's good. And oh, this I one, will. It's going to be good. Like I said, so this is going to be episode three coming up. Yes, you sir. know, we've already had the two and I, I caught the first two and you know, the, 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 the first one you boys had me in friggin' hysterics. <laughs> you know, then the, the second one, same thing, you know, hysterics and, you know, but, but also, you know, th- th- you're talking about the cooking and talking about your experiences. The second one was the experience at the Roy- um, Memphis in May, you know, you and Phil and the judges and, and oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to ruin it guys. Go check it out. They're right around an hour a piece. Yep. Well worth the listen. Um, check it out. Don't drop the tongs. Big Rome, what's up? Danny, what's happening? Uh, Kyle. Kyle has a question. Um, <laughs> ask Kyle what would be his second soup he would make. Second soup? Oh, same with clam chowder. Clam chowder soup would be my next whoa, one. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can make, I've like, been waiting chowder, years one. to drop one of these because ever since I started this four years ago at the very beginning, I got the what the hell does a boy from New England know about barbecue? What the hell does a boy from Arizona know about clam chowder? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know what? My next door neighbor, they were born and raised in Boston. They came out here, bought this house. And uh, she would make clam chowder every, uh, what is it, Halloween. Every Halloween, she would bring clam chowder over. And I, I fell in love, man. I was a kid trying that. I was like, damn, this is the best. So she taught me. She took it all down, taught me how to make it. And, oh, hey, I could, I, could kill a, I could kill a clam chowder. Nice. All right. All right. I'll, 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 take, I'll take it, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take your word on it. We're, we're yeah. going to have to try it at some point. Bruce yeah, but, you know, Lee, turn up, turn up soup sounds turn up soup sounds better on a t-shirt, anyways. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. So, uh, we 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 had talked a little bit earlier today, and we were talking about you know the boys going to, um, having the KCBS competition up in Maine this weekend. 
And, uh, you know, I was telling you, we, you know, we only really have a handful of, you know, KCBS sanctions. You know, it's getting better through a lot, yeah. a lot of the local groups, uh, New Eng- um, NEBS, New England Barbecue Society, uh, Kathy Trainer is a big hand in that. Um, but you said something very interesting that you, if you want to, you only have one competition in Arizona. So if There's you want to compete, contest. you're, you're traveling. Yeah, you're traveling. You're going to California. You're going to Utah. You're going to Vegas, um, New Mexico. Um, but yeah, mostly those, those four states, Arizona's got one contest, man. Crazy. Best contest I've ever been to too, but it's, uh, it's called Slabarama. And that's always the beginning of the year in January. Um, we have a lot of. Oh, I think we have some internet uh, issues. Oh. We'll get him oh, back. There we there go. You're is. back. Am I back? Yeah, you froze right. up for a quick second. Okay. Yeah. So there's another organization called Barbecue Championship Series. Uh, they hold contests here in Arizona. And they probably do too. But, you know, it's. It's I wouldn't say it's like backyard, but it's like between backyard and like professional. Like, you know, if you got some new recipes you want to go try, yeah, you can go. You can go there, you know, go to those contests. But, you know, I like KCBS contests. So if you want to cook in that, you're traveling. You want to do an SEA contest, you're traveling. Oh, for sure. And you just got back from this weekend. You were doing a SEA event up in Utah, if I'm not mistaken. And it was a quad. Yes, sir. So two Friday, two Saturday. An ancillary in both. In in one ancillary in both or? One Friday, one ancillary Saturday. So two steaks a day and an ancillary. (laughs) Wow, you were cooking full. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, it was. uh, That's my first time ever doing a quad. And, you know, they're, they're fun, man. Like, they're, they're. They're good content. I like the contest too because they're so easy. It's like I shouldn't say easy, but I mean, you show up, you set up a table, you set up a grill, uh, you set up a chair, you got your cooler full of beer. Now you're just hanging out. They supply the steaks. You go pick your steak, come back, and throw it on the grill, turn it in. And that's it. It's a wrap. You're done. So yeah, we went up there. Uh, Phil and I drove. Uh, here's another one you can bust Phil with. He was. Uh, my truck got sideswiped. So I got sideswiped on the freeway. So I, coming home from work and I had to drop my truck off at the, uh, at the dealership to get fixed. So I don't got a truck to go anywhere and I got the trailer and everything. So Phil was going. So I talked to Ivan and he showed up in my house and he backed up to the trailer, put it in park, got out, got in the front seat and shut the door. <laughs> so I've hooked up the trailer. I called him a dick. <laughs> and I drove the 12 hours to, to Utah. <laughs> so then he got to sleep. We had to stop every 20 minutes. He had to go to the bathroom. He had to eat. He needed water. He needed can't, this guy. I call him princess. <laughs> so, yeah, so we get there. We do two steaks on Friday. I got my ass kicked on Friday night. Uh, we went out, had some beers, came back Saturday, uh, Turned in two steaks, turned in a sausage. I got sixth in sausage. And then I took second place on steak A, and I took first place on steak B. Golden ticket, baby. And a golden ticket. Yes, sir. There you go. There you yes, go. Sir. World champs. Yes, World sir. championships. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Princess Phil. <laughs> yeah, 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 bring that and up. The best thing, all, all, all these boys in the chat, they're going to remember this shit, too. <laughs> Good. Hey, bash them. They'll be all. Slide into his DMs. <laughs> call, him a, call him a princess. <laughs> oh, yeah, Chapin. That's right. He should come up next year for the Chowder Fest comp C-Mac puts on. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, clam chowder contest? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh one all right. of our One of our boys. <laughs> See Matt Craig McPherson, he uh, he holds his he he was from originally from the Bay Area, and got married, met his wife, got married, and she was from Amesbury, Mass. So they moved back out to the East Coast. Yeah. And while while he was out in the um, out in the Bay Area, he would have this thing event called Ribber Fest. Everyone would cook something different, you know, not necessarily ribs, but you know, little little backyard barbecue, just close friends and. Each year it grew and grew and grew. So we kept it going here. Nice. And it has gone haywire. We're Ooh. talking 
couple hundred people. That's awesome. You know, three, four hundred people show up just just for the event. So he'll yeah. have, you know, 10, 12 teams cooking a bunch of stuff. You know, last year I did a, um, a little, little play on a barbecue Sunday. Okay. And, you know, I put it in those plastic ramekins so you had the entire, entire barbecue plate Sunday in a shot. Yeah, you know, and our uh, buddy yeah. Greg, he did the deep fried ribs and took it, took the whole thing with the deep fried ribs, which were killer. Wow! But uh, but yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But yeah, they do. A, he does a uh, a chowder fest. You guys got? Is there security there? No, he is the security. He's about six ten. Okay, so <laughs> if an Arizona guy comes in there and whoops everybody's ass, y'all gonna get me out? Yo, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, no, I'll make know. sure you guys of might it. smoke me. You guys might smoke me, man. I don't know. But yeah, that, that sounds like a good time. Sundays were tasty. Uh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, no, <laughs> not, nothing to worry about around here, brother. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, man, that was awesome. But, brother, like I said, unfortunately, I'm up against it. But, uh, man, it was fun talking to you, brother. Like I said, we yes, knew sir. we were going to kick off a little bit, have some fun, and we sure as shit did. But, yes, um, Oh, fuck. Uh -oh. First off, congratulations on the draw. Oh, for the oh. Jack, son. Yes, yes. I'm jacked up. For I that. was telling, I'm I forget. Ready. I think it was, was it Smitty I was saying it to? It had to have been Smitty. And it was the day of the drawing. And of course, you know, Facebook is loaded with the, you know, oh, yeah. good luck to everybody. And, you know, hope you guys get drawn. And if not, you know, we'll do it for you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then later on in, in, in the day, I stopped and turned on TikTok, and I just, <laughs> I just see a pool, you know, in the good, nice weather, and I, and I got uh, Eminem, guess who's back? That's right. And all of a sudden, here comes you <laughs> with a bottle of Jack, <laughs> put, it to the, put it to the camera, take a swig. <laughs> I'm like... Oh shit! He got the draw. Yes, sir. Then, then I went round two, baby. Then I looked, and oh man, that is awesome. So when's that? That's second week in October. Uh, I think it's the second, yeah, second or third week of October. Yeah. Nice. I uh, know. I'm pumped up, man. I'm pumped up. Yeah. I had a great experience last year, but you know what? We fell short, and uh, I just think you know, crazy story, real quick. Um. Yeah, so Smitty and I went out there, and our other partner, Kofini, Justin Kofini, he couldn't come. So it was just him and I. We tag-teamed everything, you know. And so our turn-ins were good. So now it's dessert time. So it's the ancillary time. So he's like, I'm not doing shit. You're doing the ancillaries. I said, okay. Dude, I made this I made this Jack Daniels pecan pie uh, cheesecake, and I got seven slices down on this platter. And I got this stand, this cake stand with the whole pie on top of on this platter. It's absolutely beautiful, right? So I'm walking, and Smitty's wife is with me, and she's kind of blocking the crowd, you know, getting out of the way, moving the crowd away so I can slowly wake it up there or make it up there. Now it's humid as hell. And walking, and I'm looking at my slices, and some of the slices are starting to lean. And I'm like, oh, shit. So to the left of me, there's a table next to a guy that's cooking on one of these massive Kamado Joes. He's grilling up a bunch of sausage for the public. So there was a table there. So I said, Molly, Sterling's wife, I was like, hey, let's go to that table because I'm going to try to fix these slices. So I turn and I go over to set it on the table. The cheesecake on top fell over on this dude's grill. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Well, uh, and so the whole crowd that was kind of around there, they start screaming hysterically. Like, oh my God. And then now I have all these phones all around my face as they're trying to videotape all this. So within an instant, like I picked that cheesecake up and I put it back and it's got grill marks. <laughs> it's not good. Oh, and no. we had like two minutes before turn in and Molly, Molly looks at me and she's like, do you want me to go get some napkins? Like, what, what, what do we do? And I'm like, fuck it. Let's turn it in. Just let's go turn it in. Turned it in. I was the worst looking dessert, man. Worst. I mean, it was horrible. But we get to awards and uh, I'm going around talking to my buddies and they're asking me, oh, you know, how'd everything go? And I start telling them this story. 
And they, they feel so bad for me. Like they feel, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, whatever, man. You know, it's, it is what it is. So they call us for a seventh place dessert. <laughs> and all my, all, all my buddies look at me like you sandbagging son of a bitch. Like, Come on, man. You really going to sandbag us? And I was like, yo, bro, I swear to God, like this thing fell on this dude's grill. Dude had no idea what to do, man. There's a whole cheesecake on his grill. So we walked out of there with the seventh place dessert. It was good, but I'm coming with fire to, uh, this year. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Like I said, Kyle, thank you, man, for taking the yes, time. Sir. This has been a blast. Where can everybody find you? Social media? All social media. You're behind barbecue. Uh, you can buy my rug behind barbecue.com or uh, some retail locations um online have them there's about 30 30 stores have are carrying the uh, rub now but yeah come follow me on tiktok you're behind barbecue.com instagram facebook and don't forget to watch don't drop the tongs this week i'm telling you this is good this is an epic week all right all right brother <laughs> all right let me close this out hang on one sec i'll jump right okay. back in with you real quick awesome chrissy cool. awesome so much fun so yeah. fun. Yeah, uh, he, he's a riot. He's an absolute riot. <laughs> but like I said, great guy. Passionate yeah. about it. Keeps the fun in it no matter what. Which you, of course you should. You know. Take life too seriously. Nope. That's for sure. That's for sure. But let's wrap this the hell up, Chrissy. Okay, let's do it. Well, that's it for this week, folks. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Catch the audio wherever podcasts are found. Catch the video on Facebook and YouTube. On YouTube, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. You have all our episodes right there at your fingertips. On social media, find us at all the links down below. Questions and comments, please send them to Pit Life BBQ Podcast at gmail.com. And like always, subscribe, like, rate, and review. Hit that share button. And if you are the dude walking the dog in the neighborhood, brother, you know where you talk to the kids. Stop and say hi. We'll throw some smoke in the air. <laughs> Fill the grill yeah. next week. And until next week, keep the smoke rolling. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.